Hi everybody, I'm Roy Firestone. You might know me from ESPN, but way back when I was a football camp counselor for Bob Greasy's summer camp, that was the first time that I got to meet Gene Morris. That means I've known Gene for more than 50 years. Later as an anchor on sports on TV in Miami, I got to know him as perhaps the most outspoken and colorful interview I'd ever known. But first, I want to tell you about his athleticism. When he ran with the football, as a kid, as a young adult, I just marveled of his brilliance. He ran with the football like he lived his life. He was aggressive, and daring, and dazzling in his moves. There was a ferocity with his running. It was more than just fast or elusive, though he was that. He ran with a purpose, a spunk, a tremendous burst of electricity. And at times, he seemed to run as if it were an optical illusion. His runs were thrilling and breathtaking. In my time, I watched Gail Sayers and Walter Payton and Barry Sanders. I think they were all inspiring, of course. But to me, no one in my time watching the game ran like Mercury Morris. I saw his first Dolphin game and his last Dolphin game. And at no time when he carried the football did I think there was even a chance he wouldn't score. What a player. He was the most exciting player I ever saw run with the football. And I thought that was the reason I loved him. But it was far more than that. Now, in his time, Gene was viewed as cocky, rebellious, and a term they used to use in the 60s and 70s, militant. Gene was somewhat all of those things at times. And if you want to throw in some more terms like hard-headed, stubborn, sometimes difficult, I guess you could make a case that he fit all those terms at one time or another. But Gene was not a man you could define simply. In fact, he was anything but arrogant or selfish. He was the opposite of that. He was the most giving person I knew from that team. He checked on his teammates who were in failing health and spent time with, with many of them personally, even when he knew some of his old pals could barely recognize him anymore. Gene was a fighter for justice. He believed the NFL was not looking out for the welfare of players in terms of health benefits. That would be an understatement. Gene thought the NFL was greedy and corrupt, hid the truth about brain injuries for decades, and he was right. He sued the NFL on behalf of the players who were shut out of a decent medical pension, and to this day, even after his death, the league still has to respond to some of his legal challenges. Now, he won't be there to see them answer, but that's not a defeat. See, Gene was kind of a Don Quixote-like figure to me, not chasing windmills exactly, but chasing the giant corporate NFL. He refused to let them settle for less. I found Gene Morris brave and dedicated and far more than valiant. I found him to be tender-hearted and loving to the men who helped make the Dolphins the only undefeated team in modern NFL history. Gene was always there for Nick Bonacani when Nick was slipping away with CTE. He was there for his teammate Jim Kick when Jim was in an assisted living facility and could barely function. Gene Morris was a good, kind, and generous human being who took shots when he was accused of being a cancer in the clubhouse or what they used to call the clubhouse lawyer. Gene was a follower of the civil rights movement. When he played at West Texas State, many of his teammates never played with a black person before. He almost took on some of the most bigoted players in the locker room right there and almost came to blows several times. Merck believed in what civil rights warrior John Lewis called good trouble. He was good trouble. But something interesting happened with those players who called him the N-word. They ended up respecting him, and they ended up going to battle with and for him. Because for all of the complexities and all of his long-winded monologues about race and injustice, those players, all of them, well, they got it. He helped make his teammates better players and better human beings. I saw him as not just a rebel, but a glue. A glue. That's what Gene was in the end. He held his teammates' hands when they were dying, quite literally. I saw it personally. He took his broken and brain-battered teammates gave them comfort and laughter and love. And in the end, sports is a bunch of silly, meaningless, and maybe forgettable games that can be easily discarded and dismissed over time. But what matters, what really matters, is the love. 
the friendship. The dedication not just as a player on a team, but the years after, too. Gene Morris loved being the soul of the Miami Dolphins, and for all of his errors in judgment, which he paid for, Gene was at his best giving his heart to everyone and everything he came in contact with. It's true he broke some hearts at times with some bad decisions. At times, he wasn't an easy man to love, at least not at first. But believe it, love was the center of who and what he was and what he did. He loved the game, he loved to run, he loved his teammates, and he loved to win. He was one of the most unforgettable human beings I ever had the pleasure to know. I will miss him very, very much. So will his family and friends. But I will take the love he showed to others as a light that shines brightly to me forever. I love you, Merck. I always will. Sleep well.